Hi, this is Phil Hinton and welcome to our final video from CES 2009. As always, it's been a very, very busy show. In this last video, we're going to try and get a few other highlights other than home theatre and home cinema equipment and see what other innovations there are this year. Plus, I'm going to speak to Chris and we're going to give you our thoughts on what we think the show has been like this year. So welcome to our roundup video from CES 2009. This is where we look at the real innovations of the year. Now you've seen 3D TV and all that other gubbins that's out there for home theatre fans. But I guess the thing that's really caught my imagination from the press conference the other day, and we're standing next to them now, Mark, is the watch phone. Tell us about it. Well, it's a stylish watch, but what makes it unique is it actually has a phone built into it. And it's an amazing device. It's a full touchscreen device. And to talk on the phone, you could talk on it like you're Dick Tracy. It has a speakerphone and a mic built into it, but it also has Bluetooth capabilities, so you could talk on it using a Bluetooth headset. Uh, it has an MP3 player built into it, so you can listen to your music via the Bluetooth or through the speaker that's on the device. It is a full touch screen, so to navigate through the phone, you would uh, touch the screen on it to navigate through. It has voice activated dialing. It also has text to speech so if you receive a text message it'll read you your text messages but the most amazing thing on the phone it actually has a camera built into it so you can do two-way video conferencing it's amazing and uh, we've just gotten a snip here that we're getting it first you are getting it first it'll be launching at the second half of this year in Europe it is a quad band GSM phone full 3g device it is a killer device and it will be launching first in Europe well, I know our cameraman likes to think he's James Bond. Yeah. Now he can be with this phone. You can. You know what? You got your video conferencing on it. You got your. You got everything on it. I mean, it, it's amazing. Well, that's one of the big innovations of the year. Thanks very much, Mark. Thank you. We're going to move around the show floor and see what else we can see. Whizzing through the innovations, we're on the Microsoft stand. You guys will have seen this before, it's, it's nothing particularly new, the touch screen device, but it is powered by Windows 7, which is obviously the new version of Windows, which is coming very soon. So it's uh, very intuitive to use and quite funky. You can play videos and all sorts, so uh, great little innovation. Don't know whether you're going to have this in your home. You could have it on top of the table, I suppose, and sit in the dining room and surf the net or whatever. So, good little bit of technology. And continuing to look at the innovations before we leave this year's CES 2009, we're on the Hitachi stand, and we're going to look at something that is a prototype, but rather cool, so maybe you can tell us about it. Okay, so we're showcasing here, Phil, we're doing uh, Hitachi's prototype uh, television using hand gestures instead of a physical remote control to control the basic functions of the television set. Now, um, are there specific things that you have to do so, so the TV will pick that up? Yes, it's looking for some basic hand gestures to recognize them. The great news is they're extremely simple and there aren't many of them. So learning it has a virtually non-existent learning curve. Now it is a, a prototype and I noticed that everything's picked up with this camera That's correct. underneath the TV. But if they, this was to come to market, obviously the camera would then be inside the Absolutely, bezel. yes. Yeah. So, um, Let's say we're watching the football and we get a little bit irate because, I don't know, we're a goal down or whatever and we start gesturing to the TV. We're not going to switch it over to the MP3 player, are we? Hopefully not. Now, it's looking for a particular gesture, so if you're not doing those gestures, it's going to ignore you. If, on the other hand, you do wave to the television in, in your excitement, then you're going to activate the menu. All right, Phil, so if you like, I'll take you through the whole thing. Yeah, that'd be great. So imagine you're walking into your living room and you want to watch your television set. So the TV's off, to turn it on, I wave to it. And that turns it on. It's a, I do a basic waving motion like that. This pulls up my main menu. 
if I want to scroll through my channels with a circular gesture, I can scroll through my channels, either channel up or channel down. As soon as I find the one I want to watch, I select it by pressing it, almost like there was a big invisible button in the air in front of me. If I want to adjust the volume, my hand gesture is in up and down motion like that, and then once my volume control is on the screen, I'm able to adjust the volume either up or down. This again is my main menu. You'll notice that there's actually three different things happening. In the center there's channels, in the top right corner there's a lamp, top left corner there's like a thermostat with the lid closed. So I can grab my menu and rotate it over. So let's say we're watching TV and it's a little bit warm in the room. I can open up the thermostat and bring the temperature down. Once again, waving like you're waving by to somebody. Grab the menu and close it. It'll start a timer. If I don't do anything, it'll turn off in three seconds. Or if I don't want to wait, I just push to select. Well, it's fascinating technology. Thanks for the demonstration. Oh, you're there. welcome. And uh, we look forward to seeing this when it finally comes around. All right, this is a prototype right now, so we'll see what happens. So that's about all we've got time for from this year's CES. I'm joined by Chris, who's been with us all week. Chris, uh, we're going to talk about some of the real innovations we've seen this week and what's surprised us and excited us. Well, a lot of things excited me, Phil. I mean, first thing, January, and look at the weather. It's absolutely binging sunshine. We can get a tan just sitting here. But as that's that's far as the show itself goes, you know, you've got miles and miles of complex and convention. It could kill you getting around it, but there's still stuff exciting on every single booth. Uh, by far the most exciting thing I saw was the 3D TV, which I really want one of those. And I know in the future when they're gonna become like fairly more common, we hope. I'll be reviewing Blu-rays on this. And how the hell we're gonna to get to come up with new terminology and jargon to describe three-dimensionality, you know, of one of these things. It's, it's beyond me, but it's gonna be fun working it all out. Um, and beyond that, I think the most exciting thing was being detained by the Cobra Cops. I don't know what brought that about, but they, they, had, they took an interest in me. I don't know why. I was there for some time. But luckily, of course, Phil is the one who does all the talking in front of the camera. So I left you in his capable hands. Well, for me, it's been a rather disappointing year, apart from 3D TV and some other little innovations like the remote control with a hand. And uh, we also saw... Uh, some widgets, whether that'll be useful or not, I suppose is down to the end users out there. Um, but as far as real innovation, I think it's been missing this year. What do you think? Well, there was nothing that we hadn't seen before. Not really. There was no, nothing that really blew us away apart from the 3D TV. There was nothing else that was there. Uh, no little outstanding gadgets, no innovations. And we crept around all the halls, didn't we? Um, and nothing really popped out at us. Nothing blew us away in that respect. So it seems that like the industry is just ticking over with a few concepts, a few ideas, but uh, nothing major to break through at the moment. I think the way the economy is at the minute, that's maybe uh, what's driving a lot of these companies to maybe pull back a little bit on the innovation front. Yeah, that could be a, you know, a very strong argument there. Um, the the industry is obviously suffering as much as everybody else is, so it's, um, designs are put on hold for a while. Well, it's strong sunshine here, but... As you can probably tell, I'm full of the cold. Chris so am I. We've got Vegas flu. We're, we're absolutely full of the cold. We haven't stopped for four days, so I really hope you have enjoyed the content that we've produced for you this week from CES in Las Vegas. We're going to take probably a week or two to recover now. Um, but thank you very much for watching, and we'll catch you guys again very soon. I think that's a cup. OK, let's get back to the hotel. Let's get out of here. So, uh, stick in the sea, yes. Oh, no, it's a real pain in the neck, I sure. Oh, so filming, those, filming, filming. So, what happened to those two females then? Hey, listen, mate. I don't think they were real cops, you know. The things they were doing to me in there, it's, it's beyond belief.